This is MacBook Air 2020 version with the Apple's own M1 chip. In this video, we're going to review this MacBook Air and see how well and performant the MacBook Air is. Now, the design of the MacBook Air hasn't changed a lot from its previous generation. You still have the same tapered design, which is, you know, it's thick at the back and it becomes thinner at the front. I, I quite like this design. It's, it's very unique and reminds me of the MacBook that Apple had previously that also promised the same things that M1 chip is promising today with the MacBook Air. But this design, I, I like this design. I have been using MacBook Pro for quite a long time and coming back to this design was really good. But inside is where the magic happens. So the M1 chip is Apple's own silicon. Now Apple isn't new to this business. Apple has been doing this with their, you know, the A-series processor that they built for their iPhones and iPads. Now they've taken all those learnings and built this M series processor that is capable of powering their MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and very soon their desktops, preferably the iMac and the uh, Mac Pro systems as well. But they've started this, the first generation, the M1 series, powering up their MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. So if you're looking to buy a MacBook uh, powered with M1 chip, then you're looking at those two options. So before we go and try out some of those scenarios, I do want to talk a little bit about the Apple's M1 chip. Now, Apple's M1 chip is an integrated system on a chip, which means it has the CPU, the GPU, and a neural engine, and in fact, even the memory on one single processing unit. So that gives immense power for Apple, not only to build performance systems, but also optimize their hardware and software to be more you know, efficient and, and performant when it comes to driving simple mundane tasks to complex tasks. And that's where you see you know, everybody reviewing this MacBook Air, even the base version, getting some awesome results. Apple is able to drive three key things with this M1 chip, an improved performance, an efficient thermal design, and an optimized battery life. And that leads to you know, one of the important things that you need to be aware of with the M1 chip, which is Apple is transitioning from the traditional x86 architecture that the Intel chips are based on to an ARM-based architecture that these system-on chips are based on. So when you look at the M1 processor, you're looking at a different processing architecture, um, you know, instruction set that usually the computers take up and execute uh, to be something very different from what you would be using normally on an Intel-based uh, laptop or a desktop, be it Mac OS or the Windows. So that means all of the apps that you're going to be using should be optimized for this M1 chip specifically. So I'll be doing a separate video on app compatibility with the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro M1 chips. But in this video, let's go through and look at some of the scenarios now to how well this M1 chip performs when given simple task to some complex task. You know, I'm taking up my examples like opening up apps, opening up large files, or doing some content creation in Final Cut Pro. The first thing you're gonna notice with your MacBook Air and the M1 chip is how quick it is to resume from sleep. As soon as you open your MacBook Air, it's ready to go and Touch ID is pretty fast. So again, I'm closing it, it has gone to sleep. I'm opening my MacBook Air, you can see it's very quick and the Touch ID is also very fast. These few seconds, if you calculate and accommodate over the year, it's pretty impressive how many minutes you could save just by having this really that fast when waking up from sleep. Moving on from that, the next immediate thing you're gonna notice is how quick the MacBook Air is with opening up the apps. Here, I have a few of my apps that I use every day in my dock, and I'm gonna go ahead and click all of these apps to show you how quick the MacBook Air with M1 chip is. So let's go ahead and do this.
There you go. You can see that it's loading the apps very quickly and the Final Cut Pro is also loading my the most recent library that I have been working with. This usually takes a few seconds again with an Intel MacBook Pro or MacBook Air with 16 gigabytes of RAM, but the performance you're getting here with the eight gigabytes of RAM is very impressive. One thing to keep in mind when working with apps with the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro with the M1 chip is that the some of the apps you may use may not be optimized for the M1 chip but really optimized for the Intel chip. And this is expected given that the M1 chip was very new and app developers require some time to modify their apps. The easiest way to look for that information, whether you're running a native app or an Intel based app is go to your Apple menu in your menu bar and then click on about this Mac, go to the storage, and then click on manage and then click on applications you will see a property a column here called kind if you have intel that means the app is running based on the intel architecture and not on the m1 architecture now apple has made the transition really smooth meaning that you can install the day-to-day -day apps you were using with your intel laptop in the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. Apple made this possible due to the translation engine Rosetta that comes with your M1 chip, MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. The first time you try to install an Intel based app, you will get the option to install the Rosetta engine. Once you install that, then you can go ahead and you know use any of the Intel based apps. Some apps work really well, some apps may not work, but that's the compromise you're looking at when it comes to the M1 chip. Once you cross the stage of realizing and seeing how quick the MacBook Air with M1 chip is with opening up the apps and resuming from sleep, the next thing you will notice is how good it is with managing large files. Now I have a few Office files here of which the Excel and the PowerPoint presentation are pretty complex files. The Excel workbook has 14 million rows and the PowerPoint deck has around 229 slides with lots of mixed content. So what I'm gonna do here is select all of the files and open it up to see how quick the MacBook Air is. And there you go. Before I could even say the next sentence, the MacBook Air opened up all the files. The Excel, of course, with the 14 million rows is thinking a bit but there you go there we have the excel file loaded as well so this is how quick the macbook air with m1 chip is with loading up large files now of course the powerpoint deck which i mentioned has some complex content it has some high resolution 4k images as well as 229 slides if you notice as i scroll the thumbnail previews of the slides come up very quickly that shows how efficient the M1 chip and of course the office application that is now native to the MacBook M1 chip performs really well. And this is a clear indication of how powerful the MacBook Air with M1 chip is. Again, we are doing all of these with the eight gigabytes of RAM machine, not even 16 gigabytes of RAM. That is again yet another big difference when you compare it with say a MacBook Pro with 16 gigabytes where you would see a similar performance. Now let's push this MacBook Air with the M1 chip and eight gigabytes of RAM a little bit further. Let's see how it performs when it comes to Final Cut Pro rendering and exporting videos. What I have here is a few 4K files that make up around three minutes and 20 seconds of video. I have modified the original 4K video files and have applied some effects to some of the clips here. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna play the preview and show you how smooth the rendering in the Final Cut Pro is. One of the settings I changed in the Final Cut Pro is the preview settings to be of better quality and not of better performance. Of course, if you make it better performance, you'll have a lot of optimizations applied, but I just wanted to see how much I can push this MacBook Air with the M1 chip and eight gigabytes of RAM. So I changed that to better quality. And you can see we don't have any issues in the playback. 
even if I make it full screen, the playback is really good. Now let's go ahead and export this project. This again, like I said before, is a three minute, 20 second clip. So let's see how long it takes for the MacBook Air to export this project. I'm gonna export with the default 4K settings and see how long it takes. So let's go ahead and save this file and start our timer as well. Also keep an eye on this memory. So you can see the memory pressure is low, but one of the things that is increasing is the swap memory, which is the virtual memory the Mac OS utilizes your storage disk for. So while the Mac OS is able to keep the physical memory of optimized usage, it does take into account the space that you have and the faster SSD disk you have in your MacBook Air as well to use it as virtual memory. Now, the actual memory usage has not crossed 5 GB, but the swap memory is of course nearing to 2 GB here. There you go, two minutes and 20 seconds. Final Cut Pro completed its export of this project. That's pretty impressive given that we only have eight gigabytes of RAM. And I can play back this 4K file that I just exported. Again, I don't have any issues. It's really smooth. I can scrub and I can uh, see that the performance hasn't degraded at all. One of the other things you will notice is that there is no fan noise. The MacBook Air laptop is a fanless laptop. There is no fan in this machine. So, you know, literally there is no noise. We have been working with large files and doing some really a quick task here, but that hasn't really made the system any worse or any sort of stress. And the machine is also really cool. Like there's no heat or warmth coming up from this machine. So that's really nice to have a laptop where you can actually depend on carrying and using it in your couch, in your lap. So there you go. So that's how thermal efficient the MacBook Air M1 is with the eight gigabytes of RAM. If you were wondering how well the MacBook Air can drive external display, especially 4K displays with the M1 chip, you don't have to worry. It's pretty much exactly the same as you would expect in an Intel-based MacBook Air or MacBook Pro. There are some few differences or, you know, few things that you would notice that are very uh, efficient and improved with the M1 chip, but here I have a Dell U3219Q, which is a 32 inch 4K display. And you can see there are no issues. It is just as easy as you would be using in your Intel based MacBook Air laptop. Now I will open and show you how good the Final Cut Pro performance is when it comes to rendering the uh, 4K files or even playback of the 4K files that you have. I don't have any issues again here. So everything is normal as you would expect. No issues and everything seems very good, performant. And I don't have any issues in the playback or in the performance just because the MacBook Air is driving an external display. Now coming back to the point I made earlier about the M1 chip being efficient in few instances. Here's an example. If you change the resolution, it's pretty instant in the M1 chip, MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro. This used to take few seconds with the Intel MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. Now it's like very quick. That is something that I immediately noticed. The next thing I noticed is how quick the MacBook Air with the M1 chip is in swapping the displays, right? So when I open my MacBook Air, now you can see the Final Cut Pro project window is already in my MacBook Air before I can even complete the sentence, it's that instantaneous. And when I close it, the Final Cut Pro window is in my external display. It's that quick. This is something, again, I didn't notice with my Intel-based MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, and really enjoying these updates with the M1 chip I'm getting with my external display. 
Another impressive thing about the M1 chip is its battery usage. Now, I've been using this machine to take this video for quite a few days, so I haven't charged this machine. And you can see that I still have 35%. And if you have seen my video from the start, you saw me opening up apps, opening up large files, and doing some Final Cut Pro 4K editing, and also exporting the video. So I've done a lot and even played a few 4K videos, right? So this is really good impressive performance from the m1 chip again this is something that you get used to when you're using an ipad or ipad pro but having that same experience in your laptop that is new and, and that is very impressive so with respect to battery usage you're going to have a lot of fun time using the machine and not worrying about plugging it into the adapter. So uh, kudos to Apple for bringing that uh, optimization uh, to the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. So there you go. This MacBook Air M1 8 gigabytes of RAM is more than capable of what you might want to do every day and you know push its limits to do more like content creation and video editing. So that's something that I did not expect uh, to be frank with an 8 GB machine and a fanless machine as well that sometimes those tasks could stress and increase the operating temperature making the machine really warm and not responsive so we didn't see any of those in this case the machine is still cold as ice and it didn't get any warm at all when you were doing all those 4k videos and things like that so I think this is a great start for Apple with their M1 chip series and we're going to be seeing more iterations coming through. Um, the M1X is rumored to be the next one that will power up you know the MacBook Pro's 14 inch and 16 inch laptops so I'm really excited for its future and if you have got an M1 MacBook Pro or MacBook Air let me know in the comments what you think about it so far. And if you're still on the verge to get one, let me know what your thoughts are as well. If you enjoyed this video, please do uh, press the like button. And if you wanna see more videos and more reviews, do subscribe to my channel. Bye.